The reign of Galba is difficult. On one hand, it marks a turning point. When he became emperor in the summer of AD 68, his rule marked the end of almost a century of rule by Julio Claudians. On the other hand, the sources are weak and focus almost entirely on the final couple of weeks of his reign. Galba may not have been a Julio Claudian, but he did have close connections to the family. He was one of the main beneficiaries of Livia's will. Augustus' wife left him 50 million sesterces, even if Tiberius refused to pass it on. He was also a good leader. He was governor of several provinces, including proconsul of Africa. He was clearly a canny political operator. He kept on the good side of the imperial family, under both Claudius and Nero. And in AD 61, he was made governor of Hispania Tarraconensis. Seven years later, when he heard that Nero wanted him dead, he eventually rebelled. Galbert made his intentions clear by April AD 68. By the time of Nero's suicide, he'd already based himself at the strategically important town of Clunia. On the encouragement of the Senate in Rome, he decided to march on the capital. In October, he was there. But in some senses, Galba never had a chance. He walked straight into a debt crisis and was forced to take several deeply unpopular austerity measures. His card was marked as soon as he refused to pay the military their bonuses. On January the 1st, AD 68, the German legions revolted and named Vitellius emperor. At the same time, Otho, one of Galba's erstwhile supporters, was also declared emperor. Only a fortnight later, the arthritic 65-year-old Tacitus's mean old man was killed by rebels. 120 men claimed credit.